This is a Ruger GP100 match champion. We bought this last year and uh, used it in our ballistic gel test. I did a short little review of it a few months ago. It's a nice gun, but check this out. This gun probably has less than a thousand rounds through it. It's squeaky clean right now, but the action will not move. It's totally non-functional. Now, Ruger has really good customer service, and I am sure when I send it to them, they will fix it. It'll be fine. I'm not trying to pick on Ruger or tell you not to buy a GP100. This could just as easily have happened to a Smith & Wesson, like maybe this Model 43C I picked up a couple of months ago. This is a 10-ounce 8-shot 22. It's a pretty cool little gun. But you know what's not cool is when this happens. This is what my 43 looked like on its first trip to the range after I fired about five or six rounds. For those of you who may not be familiar with double action only J frames, there is no reason the trigger should ever be stuck in the rear position like that unless your finger is holding it there. But this gun would not go through a whole cylinder without the trigger getting stuck and I would have to manually reset it. Fortunately, Smith & Wesson fixed it, no questions asked. They paid for shipping and I had it back in about 10 days. So again, I am not trying to slam either of these companies. If you're looking for a revolver to use for self-defense, you are probably not gonna find anything remotely affordable in current production that's better than what Smith and Ruger are offering. My point is that revolvers in general break a lot more often than most people realize. Last year, I did a video on the pros and cons of using a revolver for self-defense. And in that video, I listed several types of revolver failures that I had either experienced myself or I had witnessed on the range. And it seems that that has made a lot of people a little unhappy. I've been accused of implying that revolvers malfunction at a higher rate than semi-autos or that I just made all that stuff up because I have some deep-seated hatred or bias against revolvers. I can't prove that I am telling the truth about having seen a bunch of broken revolvers, except for these two, but I certainly don't hate revolvers. If anything, I have an irrational bias in favor of revolvers, and that's why I talk about them so often. I am not opposed to revolvers. I'm opposed to ignorant people perpetuating stupid myths about revolvers, like the idea that they are immune to any type of malfunction, or that they don't have to be cleaned or maintained, or that Having fewer rounds on board somehow imparts a supernatural calm upon the user, so they always take more careful aim than those reckless semi-auto shooters. Or my favorite myth is that revolvers are inherently more reliable because they are mechanically less complex than semi-autos. If you've taken the side plate off of a Smith & Wesson, you know it looks like the guts of a 19th century clock threw up in there. Anytime one thing moves, everything else moves. That means if any one of those little parts is even slightly out of spec, the whole thing is compromised. Now, even having said all of that, I have never intended to imply that revolvers are generally less reliable than semi-autos. I'm not gonna say they're more reliable either. That is completely context dependent. But I have seen a disproportionate number of supposedly good quality revolvers break on the firing line to the point where they could not be fired again without getting tools involved. Now, let me add a little additional context to that. The revolvers I have seen have the biggest problems for the most part have been those made within about the last 10 years or so and that have a relatively low round count. And that leads me to believe that in the 21st century, revolvers in general are just not made to the same standards they used to be. It also seems like there's probably some kind of reverse survival bias going on. So like if a revolver is gonna have a serious issue, it's most likely to happen within the first few hundred rounds. And then if it makes it past that point, it's probably fine for a while as long as it's well maintained. So I'm not saying that older revolvers don't have problems too. I just personally have seen them completely stop working less often than newer ones. But regardless, what I want people to take away from this is that no gun is immune to having problems. Any firearm you rely on for self-defense, whether it's a revolver or a semi-auto or new or old or cheap or expensive, it needs to be test fired with your chosen defensive ammo before you trust it to work. It needs to be cleaned and lubricated as appropriate. And if you use it a lot, it needs to have springs and certain other parts replaced periodically. If you're keeping a gun around as a potentially life-saving device, keep in mind, it is a man-made thing that can fail and you can't trust it to work based solely on the design or the name of the factory it came out of.